Hello! Welcome back to my workshop. Right, in a... Uh, crikey, it's a little bit chilly in here. Right, in a previous video where I did the quick change tool post on the mic, but I kept on stalling the motor. Well, at least I stalled it a couple of times. So, I've gone to the scrapyard and acquired a new motor. This one is a... Uh, let's just cast some light on that. Might be a bit better if I put that there. This is a Brooks... Uh, Brook Motors of Huddersfield Cub made at the Empress Works in Huddersfield and this is a 0.5 horsepower motor weighed in at a 14 kilos has two nice oil caps on it that I can, will take off and do later the bearings can do with a little bit of oil what we're going to do to show you the tests I do before I buy a motor, which is to get out this open, that's uh, stiff, that will have to come out and be cleaned right up, but for the moment we're just going to see if the motor works. But what you want to do when you buy one, or look to buy one, is just make sure you've got some continuity in the wires you want and none in the wires you don't. So there we go, let's pull that up so you can see that. You can. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and test the live comes in there. That one there is a neutral or either way round. We want continuity to between those two. Hold on. And just make sure those are plugged in correctly. Here we go, should be making the noise, but it isn't. We get continuity between there and there. What we also want to do is to make sure we don't have anything to earth. This is the earth here. Okay, so we've got nothing to earth. Make sure the earth works. And the earth does. So I'll test that to earth. And we're also getting nothing, and nothing there either. So, we've got a connection across the coil. We have no connection to earth, so it should be reasonably safe to fire up. What I've done uh, is I've made up a lead, which I've now mislaid, because I'm going through a dozy phase. Where did I put that lead? it out a minute ago. Ah, oh, no, there it is. Right. So I put on the relevant ends. Didn't think you wanted to see me fiddle around with my um, water anymore. We're going to connect up the earth first. So I shouldn't be using that bigger screwdriver. I've got a smaller one than that. Let's get that one out. Now I would feed it through the case, but this is only a temporary wire. As if this goes on a MyFord, it will be connected up to the wires that are already on the MyFord. And let's connect up that earth. See that that screw is also one that holds this block on, this connection block on. And let's look at these. I 
thing. Right, before we connect this up to the mat, something I'd also do is i check that the bearings are okay and i give them a spin. Those bearings sound a little bit dry, they probably haven't seen any oil in ages. This thing was absolutely full of dust when I bought it, uh, wood dust, so I blew all the dust out. So what we're going to do... Just look at that. That's just a, a thing of a thing of beauty. This is filled with um, SO Nutto 32. Just put a couple of squirts of that in there. I might take this motor apart at some point just to give it a good clean out before I put it into service. For some reason, oh, that one's had a bit of a dent on it which is uh, a bit sad. Right. Okay, I'm plugging this into a switched extension. Uh, put on some gloves just in case I need to grab hold of something because it may end up being live, but hopefully it won't. Right, if the lights go out now, you know this motor's not safe. Look at that. Poor old motor made between 1940 and 1951. Someone just chucked it. And all it wanted was a dust clearing out. Right, so what we're going to do now, it's got a bit of a, uh, let me just check. Right, we think that's good. So what we're now going to do, is it has on it that is held on by a screw don't quite know why we're going to try and loosen that off i've tried with various different means that have achieved nothing so what i'm going to use now 
is one of these and you will see if I just take that off put it on there you'll see that as you go down that moves and that is actually set to undo so that gives this thing both a shock Go for the big boy's hammer. This will give it both a shock and a twist. And I put it on a block. Actually, is that, no, that is turning away. Put it on a block because I obviously don't want to bend the shaft. And it's moving. Get that out. Right, let me now try getting it with this. No, nope. it is going to need quite a lot of encouragement to come out. I can't get a puller on there, that's obviously stuck fast, just give it a... Well, it's not going to want to budge, so the next question is how do you get that off the shaft? Right, let's go grab a crowbar. Soak this in some oil, but I'm going to see if I can move this at all. And the answer is no. Right, that's not moving at all. So I'm going to run it in there, and I will report back later, but that motor though, well it does work, that is quite pleasing that is, it does want stripping apart for which this has got to come off anyway, 
It looks like that oil might have gone and penetrated all the way through, you think? That's quite pleasing. If that has, then it might be able to break that off quite quickly. Let me just have another go. This is where a slide hammer, which I don't have, but might make, could come in handy. Okay, we've moved it that far. I'll do this, uh, carry on knocking, and I'll, I'll the next time I get this, I'll probably be taking this apart. I'll report back how I got on. Thank you for watching. Please like, please share, please subscribe. Uh, comments welcome. This is I'm really quite pleased with this. It's such an old motor, just chucked in the bin, but. Um, There is absolutely nothing wrong with that, and it will reverse. Apart from the fact that some wally stuck a... Oh, that's got a wobble in it now, that must mean it's moving. Some wally stuck a nasty pulley on it. Anyway, as I said, thank you for watching. Please like, please share, please subscribe.